Hey guys, look at you sneaking up on me. I uh, didn't didn't see you coming up on me there. Just kidding. Your your camera. I kind of kind of knew you were gonna be there. Um, welcome back to another episode of me painting. So today we are going to be doing a nice winter scene. Um, I'm also gonna do it a little bit differently this week. So what I've gone ahead and done is hopefully I'm working two camera angles. So I got one up here on the canvas, kind of focused, and then I've got one out here to make when I'm doing a kind of a general shot like this. So trying to improve the quality where it's still a test in progress. This was all things of why my channel didn't just launch with this. Um, so today we're going to do a nice little winter scene. We're probably going to break it up into two parts as well. So uh, it should be a weekend full of painting fun. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump right into it and get started. So today we're working with our standard 16 by 20 inch canvas. This is the size I always like to use. I've gone ahead here and I've got the canvas covered in a nice thin even coat of liquid white and colors here are already on the palette and ready to get going so I'll list those colors down below in the description maybe if I'm feeling crazy I can try to run them across the screen but uh, they'll definitely be down low in the description so today we're just gonna start right off we're gonna go right into some alizarin crimson I'm just gonna go ahead and bang that right into the brush here now I was uh, doing some a little bit of practicing and trying to learn some more and basically something I learned that I've always kind of struggled with is when you're doing your first couple strokes, I learned that if you see some streaks in there, it's because you didn't quite bang it enough into the pat or into the brush when you started. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna try to really make sure I got it in there nice and evenly distributed. And then we're just gonna go up on in here and dance in just a nice pink area. So I'm gonna add in a little bit of warmth to this. This is going off of Bob Ross's a painting called Country Cabin. Um, it's not going to be the same as his. I'm going to change it, but I will also link it down in the description so you can see his and how we're doing it. So today, what we're going to get started with, I'm going to go right back into that same color, get just a little bit more on the brush. I want to make it just a little bit warmer. Um, we're going to go and do a nice winter scene. Today's video will start with just the background and kind of laying that in. So that's how we're going to break it up is we're going to do the background in one video and then we're going to do the foreground in another so that way things kind of balance out more it's not such a one big long video you can kind of see how to do things that maybe you're more interested that you want to do and so if you're more interested in learning how to paint the cabin then part two will be more for you if you want to see how to paint a little mountain out back in the distance and then some layers of trees then this will be the episode for you as well so and if you want to see all of it hey even better come watch all of it that is the best. So we got this nice little pink. Probably most of it will be covered up because um, we're going to put a lot of trees in here today. We're going to put a lot of, um, we're going to put a small mountain off in the distance, but, um, and in the foreground we'll have a nice cabin. So probably most of that will get covered. I'm hoping really just for this top area, especially to kind of show through. So down here, we're going to have some snow and that kind of thing. So basically for that, I'm just kind of putting in a little bit of shadow color as if it's being reflected down from the sky. So today we don't have any phthalo blue. We're going to stick with a little bit darker colors. We're going to keep to the more wintry side. Um, ooh, that's a, that's a lot of blue. Ooh, goodness. Sometimes you just get a lot accidentally. Just really go ahead and beat it out of the brush there. Really try to, you don't want too much because this blue, especially the Prussian blue, my goodness, it is a strong color. That's why I don't even have to wash the brush to go into it. Look at that. We get all blue right out of it. And so I'm going to try to stick to the corners first and then kind of just dance in a little bit of the sky here. And I'm going to go up in here and here and here and here and bring it right on down into the pink but I don't want to cover up all the pink and I don't want to cover up all these nice light spots. Now see, on this one, I don't know if the quality on the camera will show through, but I can see a lot of streaks. And that's because, like I said, I really got a lot and a lot of blue color in there and I didn't really, wasn't able to get it smoothed out. That's not a big deal. We can go back up in here and we'll be able to smooth it out for sure with us brushing through it. But to help kind of prevent that, making sure you beat that into the brush first when you first start doing it that's really the best way to kind of make sure that you're getting a nice smooth distribution of color going through here so we're gonna fill in some of this I just kind of make it nice and soft and light down here not looking for too much 
a lot of shadow colors going on down there. Let's see, right up into the corner. And yeah, just like that, not too bad. Okay, so I'm gonna take this, let's, and you know what? Yeah, right in here. Just a little bit of shadow color in here. And we're, we'll create more shadow color by pulling in our trees and other things as well when we go to do it. But I just got some excess on the brush here that I can go ahead and get out, put on there, and make it work. All right. In fact, I'm going to take the least little touch of black, just the least little touch, right up into the corners. And just kind of gray it out just a little bit. Yeah, I like that. I always like that in a nice winter scene. You can see it kind of up in this one here, up in the corners. Um, I know it's a little bit far away, but you, it definitely, to me, really helps to have in those little darkening areas to kind of focus your eyes more towards the center there. So I'm going to go ahead and wash our brush today. Um, let's see here. I'm getting all turned around. The setup up here is different kind of each time so far when I do these videos. Um, because I still don't, I've got a tiny little room here in which to work and do all this. So I'm gonna wash our brush using odorless paint thinner. I've got a little can here that I just dip it down into. It's got a little screen at the bottom to help remove some of the paint. And then I go and I go straight into a trash can and just beat it side to side. So that way it removes all that excess paint and excess thinner from there. And then to finish drying it off, we beat it up on the easel. And now you got a nice dry brush. And I've got two going, so that allows me to keep on working and not have to keep cleaning all day long. But I do like to try to clean my brushes early on because I don't like that paint just sitting in there. It's not good for them. And it's always fun to clean the brush. So we're going to take a nice clean dry brush, come up here and start softening this area out. Really, really start to blend all this together and make it a nice soft sky. We're going to put a lot of clouds up in here today. I want to make it a nice cold winter scene, but also add just this little glow of the sun right off in the distance here, trying to trying to peek through and warm it up, you know? Let's see, down here, it's just really kind of, there we go. That liquid white will make everything a lot softer in color when we pull through on it. That's why it's so light down here and so much darker up here. So. There we go. In fact, if you can see here, for example, on this, the brush is white now because of how much white there is of the liquid white. And it doesn't take much, it really doesn't. You wanna keep it nice and thin because um, it'll, it'll work for you really, really quickly there. All right, so go ahead. I'm going to wash this again really quickly. Let's do that. And especially when you just go in using that kind of a clean brush just to smooth things up like that it it really does a nice job of cleaning off real easy because it's it's not picked up too much color so we're going to go right on into a fan brush here and i'm going to grab myself a tiny tiny touch of alizarin crimson and go right on into the white just like this and we're going to load this paintbrush full of color there we go. Oh goodness, this one's starting to bend off to the side. Look at that. That's not good for it. Have to try to repair them in between sets here. So, got a paintbrush full of color here, and it's got a slight little touch of red, and that's because we got the alizarin crimson up here in the sky. So we want to try to reflect that in our clouds that we're using. And we're just gonna go in here and dance in some clouds. Um, that color, that Prussian is, it is very strong. So we need to get some more paint on our brush and I'm just gonna really go back and forth with it here and we're gonna dance it in my goodness it is just not wanting to show through on that and that's okay so we got a way around that what we can do is just take the least little touch of liquid white I got here off to the side and that's gonna thin down the paint just a little bit and allow it to go right over the top of this all right so now when we do this hopefully yeah that one turned out a little bit wider at the start right and that's okay these are far off in the distance 
clouds anyways. I'm not too concerned about them. I'm not looking for a really cloudy, like I don't want the clouds to necessarily be the, the highlight of my painting here. I'm just looking for some clouds off in the distance to, to add a little something to it. All right. Okay. So we're going to take it and work with that. In fact, just go ahead and here and add a couple of stringy little guys here and here. One just right here and right there. I like that. So I'm going to take my fan brush, kind of pull out any excess paint right onto my palette just to kind of save some. And then drop in the fan brush into the the paint thinner there and we can take a i'm going to take a one inch brush today and i'm just going to come to the bottoms and i'm just going to soften them out soften out the bottoms make them just disappear don't want to see the bottoms of them we want to leave the top edge but we don't want to see the bottom all right so i'm going to kind of Bang out some of that excess paint I just picked up here and then just lightly lift up, lift up, lift up, lift up, lift up, lift up, and then lift up, lift up, bang it out again, and then just go across. Real, real light on this. We're not trying for a lot of contact. I mean, this is just barely touching it. This is really there to just kind of remove some of those brush strokes and make them side to side so they just kind of blend in a little nicer. All right, I'm going some of those stringy ones there, and there we go. We've got some clouds up in the sky. Real soft, real subtle. They're not real just up there. It's because I want the focus to be more down here, not looking for it to be too much up there. So I'm going to go ahead and wash my brush again. I do a lot of brush washing. Um, I feel like somebody who is way better than me would definitely do a better job of being able to wash the brushes less but that's part of the thing of learning is the better you keep getting at this the more you learn about how much paint to use when you're doing things like i said i got a lot of blue in my brush and that ended up with more blue up there than i really wanted um so when you're especially starting out painting that was one of the things that took me the longest to learn was how much paint to put onto the brush, onto the canvas, onto my palette, all those kinds of things. How much did I really need? And the truth of the matter is you really, you really don't need much. It goes a long, long way and less is more in these cases. So I'm getting a full palette here. And if you hear stuff off in kind of the distance in the background there, um, we got some storms rolling through here right now. So we're gonna have possibly some really kind of nasty storms coming through so if you hear any of that i apologize um i'm actually thinking about camping outside tonight uh because of it i love love camping in the rain so we're gonna go in we're gonna grab some prussian blue we're gonna grab some midnight black some van dyke brown and a little bit of alizarin and crimson and you know what i'm probably gonna go back and grab even more yeah because we're gonna use a good amount of this color throughout this painting through through winter paintings like this, Prussian blue, black, Van Dyke brown, white, those are your four main colors. And in fact, heck, you can get through it with just white, Prussian blue, and black. I've, I've got a video of Bob that he does a beautiful, beautiful painting um, where he does just those three colors. And I am really tempted to do that one. I always have been, I just haven't, and I don't know why. I'm a little scared, to be honest, to do it. Um, because you really have to work with values in that kind of a painting. And that's what we're going to be working with today. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and mix up a good amount of this color and I'm going to scrape off some of it, bring it down here and then grab a good amount of white because I want to create a dark color and a light color. And in fact, let's go ahead and get some more white for it. So let's see here. It's going to be a nice blue color is the goal. And I'm going to grab even more and you can just keep mixing this until you get to the mixture that you desire and I think that's looking pretty good for us right there let's see here if you hear any whining <laughs> in the background that's my dog I wish I had room in here for him right now he didn't want to be in here at the start of the video and now of course he wants in he'll uh, he'll be quiet in just a second if I could let him in I would doors kind of blocked so we've got here and I'm gonna 
kind of clean that up because I want that to be a smoother color. A lot of times I'll leave things very marbled, but I saw a little bit of red in there I don't want to necessarily have. But I don't mind having more white in there like that. So I'm going to leave it marbled with the white. And now we got our two different values right there. So it's the same color, just simply adding white will mean that we get darker color or we get lighter color. So to start with, what we're going to do is clean our knife first. And we're going to go up here in the distance and we're going to make the indication of a very far off distant mountain. It's going to be kind of small into the painting, but we're going to use the lighter color here because we want to create the indication that it's far, far away. So when we're doing like this, we want to get this, that little bit of roll on our plate there, or on our blade there, excuse me, by just cutting off a little piece, laying it out nice and flat. And then we're just going to go in here and he's going to live, well, he does now, right in there. And he's just going to be real soft. And we're going to soften him up by using a fan brush to kind of pull it out and decorate it with. And a lot of him is going to end up getting covered up. I don't want too much color up here in paint because I don't want him to be the focus of today's painting. But I definitely want a little mountain. I love mountains. Mountains are absolutely my favorite. In fact, that's something else I want to go for in this channel is I want to go on and get some awesome hiking videos to post up on here because I love hiking. I love backpacking. I actually, last summer, I did 200 miles along the Appalachian Trail. I was supposed to through hike it. However, I did not end up succeeding in doing that. And so now let's go ahead Throw your fan brush on the ground, that's one way to do it. Good thing I got another one here. So we're gonna take it, and normally we would use like the two inch brush and that kind of thing, but I wanna work real small. So I'm going to grab the fan brush here, and I'm gonna pull it off like this, because I want a real kind of soft top edge, and we're also going to use the brush strokes as indications for the shadows on the mountain. So that side there, I wanna make this side darker and I want to make it more in front. So I'm going to paint it down like this and we can draw in the indications of the shadow aspects of our distant mountain. And so we can take them here and then pull them down and pull them in here and down and down. And there we go. And just like that, we've got ourselves some distant little mountains. Real soft off in the distance. Nothing too crazy. And then we're just going to take the edges, pull it out here until it just kind of mists itself away. We want to just let it fade off into the distance here. but. Just by using the indications of your brush strokes, you can create the different planes, the different angles that we would normally make with our knife. We're not going to do any knife work on this mountain because he's just, he's too far away. It's all just too far to really see what's going on in there. Alrighty. I like it. So we just want to soften up this edge here. I'm going to get a nice clean brush to do that with, I guess, but now let's, we'll make it work with this just being really light. So I, uh, I love mountains. I love hiking, backpacking, and this summer I was actually supposed to go out to Africa to climb Mount Kilimanjaro. So sadly, with the coronavirus and everything else, that is obviously no longer going to happen. But the hopefulness is that next year I will get to do it as long as the uh, virus doesn't make a stunning return like it possibly could. But what might happen here shortly is I might get to go on a little trip in the next couple weeks before I have to return to work and hopefully get to go out to Colorado and do some mountain climbing and hiking out there and I'll definitely be making some videos of some trails and some beautiful mountains and maybe we'll come up with some 
cool photos and things that we'll end up coming back here to use for our videos to paint with and do things like that. So let's get a move on here. Let's go ahead. Oh, I do not want to use this guy with this messed up bristle. So we need to clean this guy again because I've got a brand new fan brush, but I'm not 100% sure with him yet how he likes to operate. I don't know his style. All of them are a little bit different. I've got one here that's a little softer and it's good for putting on thicker colors. This guy here, the bristles are really soft. This one here, the bristles are very much, much stiffer. Um, and so they work out real nice. But this one here, this one's brand new. I hadn't even, hadn't even touched any paint yet. It feels a lot stiffer. It feels like it'd be okay. Um, so you know what? We're just going to give him a try. He's going to come on in here and get to work. So what we're going to do now is create a little bit of mist down at the bottom of the mountain, which we kind of did a little bit of by pulling it out. And then we want to just pull it up, make it nice and soft. Yeah, I like it. Perfect. So now we're going to go into the same color that we used to make the mountain. And we're just going to dab a little bit here onto the brush and we're going to load it full of color. And we're going to take it and we're just going to pop it all the way across here. And we're just going to make the indications of just some distant little trees off in here. Yeah. And so you don't want to come up too high into the mountain with it when you're doing this, but you want to kind of vary your heights, let it get nice and light in color. Keep it all kind of close together. Sometimes you do want to bring it up, but you don't want to, you don't want to go up too much. Yeah. And there we go. All right. And kind of soften up through here, through the bottom of it. And then just, we're going to come in here and just pull up with it. Pull up. Pull it straight on up. And you gotta make the noises. <laughs> what's what's funny is 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 all of a sudden as soon as I start painting with like making videos, I start making these noises. And I, I tell you, it really it truly does make it a little more fun. So I'm just gonna soften up that bottom like that. And now you got a nice row of trees. So with that, what we can do, and I, in fact I actually wanna soften him up just a little bit more. And now we're gonna go in there with our new fan brush. And we're gonna load it full of that same color and we're gonna make the indications of some evergreens through there. So those are kind of like our background trees, the brushes at the ground, those kinds of things. But we'll take this color and we're just gonna dot in some trees right through here. So, interesting. All of them bend a little different and that's where taking the practice with them and learning how they bend helps you to know how to paint with them. And there we go. And so we're just gonna go across this line and just drop in some indications of some trees all the way through it. And since these are off in the distance, they won't have any coloring or anything on it. It's just gonna be this going all the way across with some, some being shorter. There we go. Bow, 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 bow. and some being taller put him right up right up into that warm spot I don't like it and trees trees are the thing they take so much time to practice and learn how to to really get them to look just right look good um, sometimes I'll make a tree and I'll go man that was that was the tree right there. I will never make a better tree than that one. And, and I'll be like, man, yeah, I'm learning how to make trees. I can make a, some beautiful, beautiful trees. And then the next one comes out and you go, oh God, what, what happened with that one? So it's always fun. And that's, that's kind of the, the, the nice part to it is, is nature. The trees are all different shapes. They're all different sizes. So don't ever get discouraged because one came out a little crooked. Crooked trees, crooked trees are real. There's a, a tree down by a trail not too far from here where I live. And I kid you not, the tree grows here, here, 
and then here. It's literally just got a bench in the middle of it. So it's they grow in all sorts of shapes and sizes and, and that's what makes them interesting and fun is that they're always different. You just never know how they're gonna grow. So there's no wrong way to paint them. And the more trees you keep doing, the more you keep at it, the better that they're gonna get over and over and over again because practice, practice makes perfect. And this is a really good painting for practicing making trees because we're gonna make a lot today. And I still need a lot of practice at making them. So it is good practice for me. Hopefully good practice for you as well as if you're painting along with me. And there we go. Now, a little bit of the issue with painting with this same color like this right over that mountain is that it's the same color. This is the same color here, 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 all of that. All that's the same color. So that makes it this painting very challenging to do because we're purely working with values. By beating this stuff down, it softened it up to make it into a whole different color. And then for these here, these also are very similar in color to the background mountain, but because we use that fan brush to kind of soften up the colors in it, it helps to define the difference between that mountain and this tree. Oh yeah. Each one, and each one is different and unique from every single other tree. And that's what I love about painting these is you just, sometimes you really, you really get it. And other times you paint one and you go, what, what happened with this guy? He is, he's something else. And that's, that's always a nice feeling, honestly. Just painting different ones. There we go. And let's add, let's add two more. I'm going to get one, one big one right here. A big old tree. There we are. And we're going to get one more. Just squeeze him right on in here. Actually, he's going to go gonna go off over here on this side all right so I'm just kind of hitting down the bottom there to kind of connect that all that land in that area so he's got some background trees still showing through these all of this is still background trees remember we still got two different colors here to work with of darker versus lighter and we're still into the light stuff so what we want to do now is take it and we're just going to again come back up and i'm going to go ahead and beat off a little bit of that excess paint i had on there because i saw it was kind of picking up more than i really wanted it to and we're just going to soften it just very lightly i want this to be the background and i mean i'm barely Barely touching it. All right, come through and I'm gonna beat it a little bit. Created a little soft, misty area for us to use. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Perfect because what we need in between layers is the mist that helps you define where one layer starts and one layer begins. So again, even though I've got a bunch of this lighter color stuff on here, I'm gonna kinda, kinda get off of just at least a little bit of the excess and just go straight into the darker color, just straight on into it because it's the same color. So I don't have to worry about it too much. But before we do that, I did forget, we need to put our background trees for our darker color. So. We're gonna take our one inch brush and go ahead and bang it right on into it. There we go. And now up here, what we're gonna do is just like that. And now you've created layers. You've created the planes in your painting 
that give it so much more depth. Now you can clearly see we've we've painted in a forest here on this side. We're still and we're about to paint in a forest over here. And we just it just didn't take long at all, did it? This didn't take long at all. And you've got a whole forest painted right on end. The important part up in here is trying to keep this a little bit straight, but also keeping it nice and dark, nice and dark. And then I'm just gonna come in on the front, kind of give myself a little bit of a bottom to work from. There we go. And yep, just like that. So we got some nice dark color in here. Perfect. So we can take our fan brush with our dark color Come on up and start putting in some darker trees right over the other guys. And we're just gonna drop them on in. And now you're just creating this beautiful, beautiful forest. And it didn't take but a minute. And boy did I tell you, we were going to get some practice making trees. I was not kidding. We have made so many trees. Most paintings don't have nearly this many trees, but we are we're getting, getting your work in today. Getting that practice. Now, an important thing to do in this, and I definitely can go above it, but I'm keeping them all shorter than the plane behind it. I don't want to make them necessarily taller because I don't necessarily want to, now in this case I actually am going to make it just slightly taller than those trees, but if all of a sudden I painted one bigger than that, and it's, it's, it's doable, but I've got this layer to consider to making it look reasonable to the background, and that's got a big old leaf on there, so what we can do is we can go back up here and make him just a little bit taller. and just kind of balance balance that leaf out. And now suddenly it fits into the tree better. Look at that, you don't make mistakes. The important thing is just learning how to work with what you get. Learning how to paint what you want to and learning how to make anything you want to make appear. Now, these trees are still, these trees are pretty much up in front of us. They're nice and dark, so we will put a little bit and of highlight color on these guys. We didn't know the background ones, but I'm thinking we can put just a little bit of highlight in them. I'm thinking just some white with a little touch of blue in it would do just nicely. Let's see, I'm going to get one right in here, a little shorter. Yeah. And another big guy over here. Kind of coming right up, right up through there. Big guy and a small guy, and we will be done with this layer here. And that one definitely ran a little crooked. I was kind of standing off over here to the side, and I started pulling him with me. So. We can balance him out by putting a little more on the other side. And let's get a small, give him a little friend over here on the side. We're running right over the top of that big one right behind him. I think your name is going to be Phil. You're Phil the tree. Yeah, he's Phil. All right. And I think with that, honestly, I think that's I think that's enough trees for me for now. So what we want to do now is go ahead and let's grab a two inch brush and let's go ahead and load up. We're going to get a lot of titanium white right onto the two inch brush, because like I said, this is going to be a winter painting. So we're going to just drop in some snow here. And I think that's going to be it for today's part uh, part one of the video. So let's go ahead and just start creating the indications of some of the land 
And so what we want to do is take some of that color and really just pull it. Go ahead and give it a good pull and make sure you got lots of paint on that brush, but pull some of that color, bring in that shadow right into the snow. That's totally okay. Picking up that color, add some of that depth into your painting and it helps create the lay of the land when you actually have that in there. And so we want this snow to kind of fall right in here and create a little, little basket to hide and kind of hold it all. All right, so I'm good with that right there. Let's go ahead, we're gonna take a fan brush. <laughs> I'm getting my hands full holding all kinds of brushes. <laughs> Let's see here, I'm gonna set him down. In fact, honestly, I, we're pretty much, we're done with the dark color for, for right now, so. I'm gonna set him down over here, but I don't wanna wash him quite yet because we will be using him again. And I'm gonna grab the least little touch of some blue and go right into some white. Now, I know that there is a lot of paint in there, a lot. So I'm immediately just gonna go straight in to some liquid white for it. Just get some liquid white. And I'm gonna mix myself up a nice light blue color. We're gonna use that to kind of highlight our trees here. And the other thing we can do that I definitely want to. We're gonna add a little bit of just some branches in there, some trunks. So just take it and take your knife and go straight up through it. That adds the indication of the trunk. And I'm only doing this with the front trees because the back trees, they're, they're too far away to see. And they're, these trees even are still too far away for me to kind of paint in any details on those trunks and things, but we can definitely add in the indications of them. We can also come up in here and scrape in just the indications of some little sticks and twigs. And for the longest time I didn't do this, but I feel like it really, really does add another level of detail to your painting when you do these. They don't show up very well on camera, but when you really, start to see them in your painting, paint them in there, see what happens. Go ahead and just scratch them out. If you can hear this, I'm not being light with the canvas. I'm scratching it, pulling it hard, and it creates little sticks and twigs that to me help bring a, just a touch of a little detail back there into your trees. Now, in the sun setting right over here over the mountain, and it's created this cool pink little haze over the trees. I love that. I love how that's given that, that glow in there. So I got my thin highlight color here. I'm gonna just come up in here and on just this side of the trees. And I'm not looking for much. I really don't want much detail on these trees. And I'm just gonna add in just the littlest, slightest indications of it. And then come back up and get some more. And the important part is that I know where my light source is. So I want to keep it all kind of the light on these, this area. So these trees, I'm going to put it on the left. These trees here, I'm putting it on the right. And there's not much. I don't even know if there's enough to really show up on camera. But it's just subtle enough to be seen when you're looking at it, but still soft enough to really show some distance. Now with this guy, I'm gonna put it, he's gonna get more of it all kind of over, all over the place, but it's gonna be really still soft. Soft, 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 soft. And especially the farther down you go, the darker, darker, darker you want your colors to get. Now, I especially am picking up lots of that dark color on there. So I wanna make sure that I'm trying to keep it nice and thin and nice and bright. So when I do put this color in there, it shows up nicely. Yeah, just like that. Just the littlest indications of a little bit of snow. And that's a big one there. And that's okay. If you all of a sudden get one that's just really bright, kind of shows through, you can always come back over it and hit it again because you're picking up, you can see this dark color right here. You're really picking that up as you go through it. So I come back up and kind of wipe it off a little bit first before I go run it through my nice bright color, so that way I don't ruin it too much. And that helps me kind of keep reusing it as I go through this. All right, not too much on him. 
he's a little bit short to be seeing it. He's a big end, so I'm gonna give him just a touch more. Oh yeah. There we go. Last one. Alright. In fact, you gotta be careful about this. You don't wanna get too carried away, but I wanted to add just a little more detail right up in this guy here you don't want to get add too much because you don't want to lose your darkness your darkness is your friend but adding these certainly helps and it makes things look really nice so with that I think that's gonna be the end of part one today so we got a nice mountain in the background we got some trees so in the next episode what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in a little bit of a cabin right up here in the front um, he's gonna be nice and strong because I would love to live out there. I, I can't wait to move to somewhere like Colorado, Alaska, maybe even the Northeast, because uh, I just, I truly love mountains and I would love to be able to just go out here and hike all the time. It would be so much fun. So we're gonna put in a little cabin there so I can go out and visit it sometime. We're gonna put just some little patches of grass and things like that up in here that's popping up through the snow. And then we're gonna add a big old tree off to the side because no painting is complete until you have the big old tree to just go through it. So when we do that, we might actually come back into the background here and add some other dead trees because that's something I always find with Bob Ross videos is he does a big tree that, especially in a winter scene, it's lost all of its leaves, but in the background he has a lot of evergreens. So I'm thinking it would be nice once we get our cabin and our tree in here so we know where we're working with to go back in here and add in a couple of those trees that have lost their leaves as well. So that's why I don't want to lose these colors. Um, and that's the magic of oil painting. This stuff stays wet for so long. It stays wet for a very long time. So you could paint this, take a break for the evening. Like I'm doing this actually kind of late at night tonight. It's going to be up tomorrow morning. Um, and I could come back tomorrow morning and keep working on it. And it's going to be just as wet as when I was doing it right now. Um, so that's the awesome part about oil painting. This stuff takes a while to dry so you can keep working on it. And you can especially keep putting in things and changing things as you go because it's still wet. And that's just what makes it so much fun to me is that you can change and make things any way you want to. So we'll add in some dead tree. Or I say dead trees. They're not dead. They're just missing all their leaves. So we'll put a big old one there. We'll put a cabin in there. But I am, I'm very happy with this today. I love this and how this has turned out so far. Um, I don't remember if in Bob's he has a big tree over here. I know he doesn't have the mountain. The mountain is something that I added for myself. Excuse me. Something I added for myself because I just, I, I wanted to have a mountain back there. So, but we'll add in a cabin. We're going to do it a little differently than his. He does cabins amazingly. That's why it's going to be part two of the video because the cabin's what's going to take me a long time to do. Um, I haven't done very many of them, but hey, when you learn how to use this thing, you can make anything any way you want to. So I hope you did enjoy today's episode. Hope you look forward to seeing part two. It will be up on Sunday, I hope. Um, and hopefully, because hopefully this will be up on Saturday. <laughs> um, so if you did enjoy it, please leave a like, subscribe. Um, I hope to keep uploading these. I want my weekend videos to be painting videos. I want to have that as the relaxing thing to go and do on the weekends, have people come and paint along. If you do it, send me the photo of what you do. I would love to see somebody else painting these things. They're beautiful. They're so much fun to do. Um, and I love helping other people do art. Earlier this week, I had a friend come over and I actually taught her how to paint. She did her first one ever. Um, and it turned out wonderful. She actually did a Southwest scene with a little mountain and a big cactus on the side. It was beautiful, especially for her first one ever. Nobody would have thought it was her first one. So I love helping people learn how to do it. And I love seeing people's work and seeing how happy they get because everybody truly can do it. So send me some of your stuff. Let me see it. I hope you're staying safe out there. Look forward to seeing part two. If you do drop a like, let me know. Until then, have a good one.